Hey, good morning, everyone. It is last day of SEMA. We're actually uh, walking over to the media center, got to drop off our bags. But it's been fun. It's been a lot to see. A little bit overwhelming, but yeah, a little, little so bit fun. A little bit. <laughs> you really are pretty tired at the end of the, each day because there's so much to see and you're just walking all over the place. But last day, we're going to be here a few hours and uh, hopefully we'll be able to cover just a little bit more for you, some things we kind of missed and uh, wrap this thing up for you. But it's been a great SEMA 2023 and uh, looking forward to showing you what we saw here. Well, instead of heading straight to the media center, they got their overlanding experience out here, but there's a few cars out here that we thought we'd uh, at least walk past here. Steer Smart's performance steering and chassis on a Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. Quake LED, LED's got this crazy build. Looks like two little superchargers up there on the top of the engine on a uh, I don't know if it's a so late it 70s, looks like early 18, 80s, Corvette, 80s Corvette. Yeah, something like that. We know a little bit too much about these. We had one at the dealership for <laughs> for a little bit. A little too long. And we got a Fox Body Mustang here. Super clean, 7 liter EFI, and it's got two Torque Storm superchargers down here and over here. That's a that's a pretty big motor. But Look at these clamps, <laughs> they're, they're like leather. <laughs> so interesting way to do it. A Carmen Ghia that's made for going out in the desert it looks like. Another build sponsored looks like by Quake LEDs. And a little beetle here with an international radiator grill here. This one though, Tyler and I have seen every night we've gone back to the hotel. Check this out. That is, looks like four layers of plexiglass for a wheel. You can see how thick it is, all bolted together. I'm not sure if they're trying to show off anything. They do have LEDs back behind there on, on the backside of the rotor, but another one by Quake LEDs. It's an interesting build. <laughs> Kind of makes you wonder what the real wheels look like then, I guess. Quake LED here with a Bronco. Kind of an interesting plaid wrap on it. Bodyguard bumpers. And we are, sorry, we are sniffling so much. Boy, both Tyler and I this week have had so many sinus issues with the dry weather out here in Vegas. Not like at home. <laughs> Quake LED looks like they're, they're sponsoring most of these builds. This one's, I don't know if that's an old Ford or an old Chevy. I think it's a Ford just by the grill, but they got track system on it. Definitely a, I guess you want to call it an old school snowcat. <laughs> Another Quake LED, Rubicon Jeep. Rebel Off-Road. Heard of these uh, Rebel Off-Road quite a bit. I mean, they're on Instagram and uh, you can check them out, but this is a, looks like a build from them. Really done up. I mean, it's got all kinds of goodies. King Shocks. King Reservoirs, obviously. I mean, it's, it is fully built here. Rock Slide Engineering Steps, again, we talked to those guys yesterday. Awesome people. Those are uh, some great steps that they provide. Oh, a Defender. You don't see these very often, but one of those British staples. I mean, they are, uh, they're a workhorse. Another Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. This one's from bawarrioran.com. Warren Winch, sitting on a pretty OEM style uh, suspension. It looks like maybe a little bit of a lift. And this is a, another def Defender. Kind of an interesting color. I like the color. I mean, it's, I think it's something my wife would like. And I think it's interesting too. It's a, it's a more of a flat, you know, not a lot of metal flake in it or anything like that. There's actually no metal flake in it, but just a neat little, Defender. 
Then we got this beast over here. Lots of patina on this one because it was all spent right in here. Looks like an LS poly EFI on it. Yeah. Looks like it might be sponsored by Jegs. You know what, too, looking at this, got a really nice looking wood bed back here. Looks like their fuel cap is back over here. But yeah, that's a, that's a cool looking truck. And there's still more to see over there. So we'll head on over. This is over in their kind of uh, overlanding expedition here. Got some trailers that, you know, pull behinds that hold your gear, awnings, tents, supplies. We've got a Raptor as well, F-150 Raptor. Awnings and that, this is Taruka it looks like. Awnings, rooftop tents. Here's a Bronco. Kinda Cleaver tires on it. No, those Icon suspension, the billet upper control arms. Again, it has the awning. And it looks like that might be the outdoor shower connected to the side of it here. There we got a Toyota. Is that a, uh, looking at that, I'm not quite sure which one this is anymore. <laughs> Don't keep up very well on the Toyotas, but again, a full Icon suspension on it as well. Oh. Warren Winch. Yeah, I'm not sure if that the, I think that might be the Forerunner, but just really sitting tall. <laughs> We've got a few of these big Unimog type trucks out here. <laughs> cool, <laughs> English translation, cool. <laughs> oh, we've got a, uh, oh, an R1T. These, these are built just down the road from us. I mean, over in uh, Bloomington Normal, Illinois. But has the rooftop tent and then awnings. Won't need, a, they have the roto packs on it, but you won't need any for fuel on that one. Bronco, rooftop tent and awnings. I like the graphics on that one, it's pretty cool with the, uh, the forest look to it. Adventure Overland Project, I'm looking at a sign here. So this is a, a build that they had done. Looks by uh, Rack Roof Racks. Neat looking build. Looks like a stock suspension, but they've got a uh, aftermarket bumper, lots of light. But a neat build. Also here is a Jeep Gladiator. Or no, this was a, well, it might have started actually, well, probably maybe a Gladiator that has the back of a, of a Wrangler. I got the sun kind of in our eyes here. So you got six doors. Run on Baja Pro X from Mickey Thompson. 1543-20s. Big tire. We're, but DV8 doors, but... They put a back half on it here with six more tires. So this thing's like, uh, is an eight wheeled vehicle. Just so they could put their uh, side by side on it here. So yeah, this is uh, quite the rig. I'm still room for the rooftop tent. So if you need lots of passenger room, this one holds, let's see, five, seven. So. You got a family of seven. Here you go. Check this one out. We've seen a few of these. I got a couple here in the shot of the Mercedes-Benz Sprinters that have been converted to overlander vehicles. Some with a, a bigger lift than others. Another, I believe this is another Sprinter van here. Rough road equipment. so many things out here. I mean, it's for, for every automotive enthusiast. Like I said, this is the overlanding experience over here and just so many different things. Oh, here's uh yeah, ultimate overland vehicles and van conversion parts, RRE. 
Looks like they have fold out uh, rear benches to go into beds. Again, some more vehicles. Uh, it's always hard to tell between the Sprinters and the Transit sometimes. Yep, more Sprinters here. Lots of Sprinter vans. More Ram trucks with campers on the back of them. Elevation off grid. This is a big truck. It's an F550 chassis it looks like. And then uh, put the camper shell on the back here. Super Tramp Campers. That's big. Another uh, kind of military looking one is this guy over here. Another Ford Super Duty. Got some lots of rhino lining all over that or just line x or something like that all over that truck oracle lining lighting with their uh, unimog got here that's pretty cool those are some huge trucks and over here a bronco raptor in code orange with a couple unique driver and passengers they must have forgot to eat this week Got stuck in their Bronco, having too much fun sitting in it. But looks like Motley uh, has some additions to the bumper here, and they've got some lights and that on it too. Aftermarket tires, they've got some pro comps on there. Even have a uh, tire step to get up to the rack they have up over here. Diabolical, seen these guys quite a bit. They got some great uh, aftermarket boxes for the back of your Bronco. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Tyler and I were only able, in all of these videos we were putting out, this is only, I don't know, I'd say not even half of what you can see here at SEMA. There are so many vehicles around here. I would say this is maybe 5%. It, it's crazy. Of the, of the vehicles that you can see. Oh, yeah, they, because every sidewalk you go down here at the convention center, more vehicles. Uh, you turn a corner inside the convention center in a hallway, another vehicle. I mean, they're just everywhere. So we apologize that we weren't able to get you every vehicle or every uh, vendor, but every hall has a ton of stuff. Yeah, we made our way. We're in South Hall, and this is one that we didn't see before. This is Ruffian Cars. This is their 1967 Mustang Fastback. I mean, it's got the side exhaust, some knockoff wheels, so definitely racing wheels. I love that they have a pistol grip shifter in here, but gorgeous gauges, racing seats, <laughs> rear tire or rear seat delete, but we've got the spare back there. Transmission tunnel is all painted in a kind of a bronze, like the roll cage. The bullet style side view mirrors, which I absolutely love those. They have, actually too have this nice cutout here, letting out some of the heat. Just a yeah, gorgeous car. We got a Shelby engine underneath here with the velocity stacks. And you've also got brake cooling. You got the ducts here. Yeah, wrap through down to your braking system. Look at that. That is even all the lines run. Gorgeous yeah, looking car. Basically, kind of in that uh, highland it green and then cut it out. with the amber driving lights and those fenders sticking out just a little bit. Yeah, really tie this thing together. They've also got a 1964 Galaxy 500 with a sweet, like, almost like camo paint job. Super low to the ground. Looks like it's ready to go racing right now. It's moving while it's sitting still. Again, Ruffian is the builder of these. Got the chin spoiler on the front. Driving lights. Got the power dome bulge on the hood. Heat extractors. And just the paint job alone is gorgeous. And the way that they have painted the body lines are amazing. Got your racing seats in there. All go on the inside. Not a lot of amenities. You don't need them when you're on the track. 
just a pair of tail lights for everybody else to watch. Even oh, come around back here with some really cool pieces. Figures like in between rounds, you take it off and put it. There's also a little fan. The arrow comes through. So you flip a switch. Yeah, you flip a switch and it dries your helmet out. Super cool. Look at the arrow underneath here. Ruffian cars. Check them out. Well, here is another amazing build. This is actually a 1956 Ford F600. Looks like we've got a Cummins diesel in there. It is not stock, obviously. We've got twin turbos, and they are huge on this thing. Fully built type motor, painted up. Also have some beautiful, like, dark bronze wheels. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little bit of reflection. Amazing looking vehicle. I mean, it's got a chassis underneath this. This is not anywhere near stock, obviously, anymore, guys quad cab and i love that they got the bronze finishes on the door handles the mirrors really ties it all together beautiful dark leather interior almost like a saddle leather same in the back and then this beautiful wood bed it almost looks i don't know walnut but this was a oh yeah there's a 2023 finalist for best paint Huge wheels in the back. Exhaust coming out, the rear fender. Everything's been smoothed on this vehicle. And you know, we were kind of talking to another builder. Sometimes the paint can make the wheels and sometimes the wheels can make the paint. And on this, I think they really work well together to, to really complement one another. Suicide doors for the back. Again, just a beautiful interior. I mean, this would be something I would love to drive myself as a daily driver. And with that diesel underneath there and the twin turbos, this thing's got to make a ton of power. Again, just another awesome build here at SEMA 2023. Over here at Hushmat, got a gorgeous, probably 65, 66 Mustang somewhere in there. I don't see a sign on it, but done in the golf colors has a five liter coyote in it wide body kind of back here the fender flares gorgeous interior pulled in that golf colors on the inside manual transmission just gorgeous looking car 66 ford golf mustang right here vintage fabrication is the builder of it just another gorgeous build here at SEMA. Okay, if Monk were here, she would look at this and say, Dad, this is something you like. And it is, it's, it's, it's no joke. I love the Datsun cars. Uh, 240Zs are, are my favorite. Um, the 260 and 280s, I like them as well because again, they had the same body style, just a little bit bigger as they got into the you know 260 and 280s. Um, this one is really well done. Uh, Got the lens covers here, which you don't see very often. It has a really cool painted bumper, kind of in a graphite color, which complements the, the fender flares. And they got like the Watanabe style wheels on it. Usually those are really light, but still has the inline six, but with different, definitely a different carburetor than what came in it. You got three of them there two per cylinder awesome looking little uh, side view mirrors I really like these I always like the ones when they mount them to the fenders actually in Japan because they're the really cool racing look the riveted seats only way to do it manual transmission looks like a quick disconnect steering wheel and they're still running the small tires on it which are really cool I mean 225 50R 15s Stuck with the original bumper on the back. Uh, Lady Z, oh, from Alberta, Canada, with a carbon fiber rear wing. Probably not the exact color choice I would do. I always like the blue that Dotson had on these, but again, gorgeous cars. I love these Dotsons. 
Yeah. Well, we came around the corner and Tyler found his next car. He's tired of his electric car, so he's going all in at Dove Racing for one of their kit cars that actually comes with a Hayabusa power plant in this thing that obviously revs to 11,000 RPM. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be one of those things that uh, we were talking about. It's not safe. It's probably not practical, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. And nothing like going fast in an open cockpit. I think Tyler's ready to sign the dotted line. Do it, Tyler. You look awesome in it. Imagine pulling up to work in that thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everywhere you go in that thing. Everywhere. Oh. Dude, what, what is that? Oh, yeah. It's so fun. And so I decided to put the seats like that specifically so I could just take it to the car wash, spray the whole thing down. Oh, right, there's, right. There's a hole in the bottom of the seat, so all the water oh, well, drains out. out. And you don't get wet. And you were saying it was on a Lotus Elise kind of platform. They, they use that kind of geometry on it. Nothing. So it dries like a Lotus Elise. So yeah. what you don't do, people, what we're talking about is you don't break in the corner. You got to break before the corner and then power out. So. <laughs> Man, that is but awesome. it is a rear wheel drive for sure. Rear wheel drive, yeah. Man, All performance. Steel little gear LSD, right. so it's not, they're not, there's no plates in that limited slip differential. Right. It's all gear driven, and it is incredible. It's super sensitive, easy setup, no maintenance, last forever. There's that is no awesome. Parts in the right, that see. is awesome. Dove Racing. You guys better check them out here on the site here. DoveRacing.net. DoveRacing.net. Oh, that's awesome. Check them out, guys. Hey, guys. It's Nick, a.k.a. Dad, from Monkey Business Off-Road. And I'm over here with John at the American Modified Off-Road booth here at SEMA. His wife just walked away. She didn't have to. She's <laughs> right here. But we want to come over here because we showed you a Bronco that we did a walk around down out in the parking lot. It was the red one that had the search and rescue badging all over it. That's actually John and his wife's Bronco. They drove here from Oklahoma out to SEMA and wanted to stop by their booth. We've been talking shop for probably the better part of 10, 15 minutes about Broncos and that. And these guys have products for you and your Bronco to make it more you. Um, to do what you want to do with it. So let me turn it over to John to kind of let him tell you some of the products they offer you as a Bronco owner, or even if you've got another maker model, they have products that could fit your vehicle. So John, what do you guys have to offer over at yeah, American Modify? Thank you, Nick. So um, at American Modify, we're doing great stuff. Right now, the only thing we have out for Broncos is the new uh, grills and tail lights. But I'll let you on a little secret. We're actually starting to make aftermarket fenders front and rear out of ABS plastic. These are gonna be a perfect fit mold. You're not gonna to have to body work them. And they give you the option of a perfectly flat finish so you can vinyl wrap it without any issues. If you wanna paint it, you could go to it and scuff it up with an 800 grit and then a scuff pad. It'll be a perfect paintable surface. Now we do all of our scanning off of those electronic computer scanners. And after we're done, we make a draft mold. We test fit it, find out the kinks and issues. And we do three other runs to get all the kinks and issues out. And after that's done, that's when you get your perfect finished mold. So we had our Broncos right, our Bronco girls right here. We make our own custom lettering. And then we also have it to where you could do a lighted surface. So something like that over there. We make it to where you could fit your camera if you have a front facing camera. And if you don't have a front facing camera, we make a light bar that goes all the way out through here like you see it on mine. And as you saw on my light bar, there might be some water in it. That is a test fit light bar. And these are some of the kinks we're working out. So the new light bars that you're gonna get are gonna be completely waterproof. They're gonna be good for weathers like you get in Canada or weathers you get in Texas. So hot and cold, they're gonna withstand it. They're not gonna leak out that oozy film that gets to some areas. They're not gonna get the condensation of the water that you see. So on my Bronco, that is the first test fit grill. So if you see any kinks, that's why, because it's the first one. This is the third prototype, and the one over there is the second prototype. And now the ones that y'all are gonna be getting are the test fitted, perfect fit, no trimming, no bending, no heating. They're gonna just pop right in like the factory grill. And that's the same type of work we wanna have on the fenders we're making. So we saw a lot of people's issues with the fiberglass fenders. You have to body work, you have to sand them. They don't fit properly. And that's okay for most people, but for the average person that just wants a pop and finish, 
that's what we're trying to make. It's just for an ease of maintenance, do it in your garage, have it done in a weekend, and you're back on the road. And that's what we try and make here at American Modified Off-Road. Well, like John said, he kind of let you in on a little secret here. So uh, definitely check out American Modified for different grills for your Bronco and keep tabs on them because it sounds like they got more products coming down down the pipe so yes most John, definitely we appreciate your time and hey check out american modified